Welcome back to another outdoor tip by Off the Beaten Path Maps. This is part two of our visitor center uh, segment. Now what I'm going to talk about today with visitor centers, I'm going to give you just something to think about, is the money that goes into them. Now, you know, there's a lot of people out there, and I'd say the majority of us, are trying to keep these lands open for multiple use. And I would say that's the majority that are trying to do that. But yet we go into an area like Moab, for instance. We go into Moab and we stop at the visitor center and we want to get a map of where to go ride, where to go ATV in, where to go ride, ride our motorbikes, drive a Jeep, whatever it may be, go hiking. We go into the visitor center, find what we want, we buy it, we go out, we have a good time, we go home. And don't think another thing of it. We may be a member of Blue Ribbon Coalition or USA All. So we contribute to them. We buy our membership and stuff, and <clears throat> excuse me, they spend a lot of time fighting these closures that our land agencies continually impose upon us, the public. Well, the thing you need to think about is that with visitor centers, especially when you're buying them through like the National Park visitor centers, uh, visitor centers owned and are operated by CNHA, which is the Canyonlands Natural History Association, or any of the visitor centers that are operated by natural history associations. <clears throat> the money they get goes back to those land agencies. So, here you are on one hand, being a member of some group to try to keep roads and trails and stuff open for public use. On the other side of the coin, you're over here buying a map or a book at a visitor center, and that map, that money is going back to the land agencies to close the areas you want to enjoy. Sort of ironic. Now, I'm just like anybody else, me and the family, we go travel and we go to Islands in the Sky or some other national park. We stop at the visitor centers to see, you know, what kind of souvenirs we can get. <clears throat> And you know, the Department of Interior, they don't always get a good budget and they usually are the first to get their budgets cut. So they need that money coming in from the, you know, from the visitor centers, from, you know, from your fees to get in, that's for sure. But <clears throat> something to think about is, is that the money you're spending at those are not only going to the National Park Service, they're also going to the BLM. They're also going to the Forest Service. They're going to the land agencies that manage these natural history associations in the form of a board and tell them what they can sell, what they can't sell. And that money comes back to them and in turn they use that money to lock you and me, the public, out of our public lands. So just something to think about when the next time you're going to a visitor center, check and see who's operating it. If you go in there and <clears throat> it's operated by the city, well find out you know, where's the money go? Does it go back to the city? For example, Monticello, Utah. Their visitor center is operated by the city, but the monies that are uh, obtained through sales and stuff go back to CNHA. They get to keep a small, small portion. The rest of it's all paid for by the taxpayer. The rest, and then it goes to CNHA, CNHA divvies that up to the land agencies, and there you go. So, just something to be aware of. We wanted to point that out to you, something to think about. You have a good time, and we'll see you next time on Outdoor Tips by Off the Beaten Path Maps.